every time after a party, maybe I went home at midnight. And what I did was that I couldn't sleep anymore. And I was studying German, uh, okay. like in the middle of the night for hours. It's the Germany Experience Podcast, the show previously known as Expat Life Germany. And this is the first episode with a new name. Now, as I said in the announcement that I released last week, nothing changes in the show. It's just a name change. We'll still get to hear the expat stories like my guests this week, Cindy from Hong Kong, who talks about how she found motivation to adapt to Germany and learn the language. So the focus is still on how outsiders interact with Germany and the culture and the language, but the new name just better reflects what I want the show to be. So God, God knows if you'll still be able to find me. Everything's changed. Twitter, Facebook... Instagram, website, you name it, it's changed. So here's the new details. The new website is thegermanyexperience.de. And uh, I'm, I'm going to put all these in the show notes below anyway, so check that out. Instagram, the.germany.experience. And Twitter, at GermanyXP. Uh, Facebook, you can search for The Germany Experience. Good luck finding me. Oh, and by the way, if you've already subscribed to me on Twitter or Instagram or Facebook or one of those things, you won't have to do anything. It'll just change on its own. It'll have a new name. Uh, so you won't have to search for me and subscribe to me if you already subscribe before the changes. All right. Now to this week's guest, Cindy from Hong Kong. She has a blog called My Life in Germany, where she shares her knowledge and experiences of life here in Germany. And basically, she gave up a secure job and a bright future in Hong Kong for a move to Germany. And it wasn't something that her friends and family understood at the time. But once she was here, she, of course, as many of us know, who have moved to Germany or another country, it's never plain sailing. So she went through some tough times. Now, I'm fascinated by where people get their motivation from. And in Cindy's case, she used difficult situations that she came across in everyday life as a new foreigner in Germany, as well as remembering how much she gave up to get to Germany. Now, she used these things as uh, fuel for her fire and motivation to just adapt and learn the language. So here is Cindy's story. Let's start off by you telling me where you're originally from. So I am originally from Hong Kong, and now I live in Germany, so around Munich area. How long have you been here? Um, I'm here since 2010, so I've been here for some years now. Uh -huh. And uh, what, what exactly brought you to Germany? So actually, I did a master program. So I studied my master in Berlin. So I moved from Hong Kong to Berlin in 2010. So I was one year in Berlin and before I moved to Munich. And what did you think of Berlin when you were there? <laughs> it's a very big city. I yeah. think um, it's... A very good city if you are a student. So okay. if you are young and you, you want yeah. a lot of uh, activities and nightlife, then it's uh, great there. And the price level is also lower, actually. So it's, uh, the cost of living is, uh, is lower, it's easier. Right. Um, but when I have a job and family and, and uh, so for living, um, I think in Munich is better. This is my opinion. So, okay, so let's get on to that. So you came, you, you were living in Hong Kong, you were studying there, and then you moved to Berlin to finish your master's. Yes. And when you were done, you didn't think about going back to Hong Kong? No. <laughs> no? Uh, no, actually, I, I uh, looked for a master's degree in Germany with the aim of staying in Germany afterwards. So but why? why what, what, what made it that, that that was your plan? When I was a kid, when I was a kid, I always thought that I would stay in Hong Kong forever because I grew up there. I knew everything there. I've, yeah. I've, I, I've never been anywhere else. So I thought it was the best place in the, uh, in the world and I would never go somewhere else. Sure. And this, this thinking changed um, when I was 20 years old. I was uh, in an um, exchange program. So I was in a bachelor degree in Hong Kong. And then there was one semester I did an exchange program with another university in Prague. So Czech Republic. And for six months I was there, I totally fell in love with Europe. So I okay. loved it so much and I was traveling everywhere. And after I went back to Hong Kong uh, from my exchange semester, I couldn't be happy anymore in Hong Kong. Really? So, so, yeah. so what you'd seen in Europe, you just had, you had to see some more of it. It's just so different than in Hong yeah. Kong. So Hong Kong is a big city. You have, um, you know, big buildings everywhere. People are super busy and everyone has to work a lot. And um, it's just very fast paced. And okay. 
when I was in Prague, I found out that there is a different lifestyle. That's yeah. um, I, there's not only one lifestyle. There is another lifestyle that I can also be slower. You know, I can enjoy my life more. I can travel all around Europe because every uh, countries are so close together, and um, people are. I think they are less materialist somehow. So I mm. feel like they are more enjoying life. They have more work-life balance. And okay. so I was very impressed. And when I went back to Hong Kong, I felt like I, I was a different person. So I couldn't, you know, I couldn't fit in anymore. I, I couldn't forget about Europe. And I always, I just wanted to find a way to go back to Europe. <laughs> yeah. And then, <laughs> did, what, what, yeah did your, then, what did your friends and family think? Did you tell them that when you got back to Hong Kong? The kind of, but I, I think so. For for the friends who who has never lived abroad, they yeah. they couldn't really understand what I meant by right. that. So because they they were like me in the past, right? Yeah. Um. So I I start to make friends who are more uh, who has a more similar mindset like me. Maybe someone who have been abroad, they live abroad before, study abroad, or or work uh, abroad before, and, and then I feel like I have more connection with them. They they yeah. understand what I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah. So um, those people, they also they they like adventure. They want to go somewhere else than staying in Hong Kong forever. So I start to make like new friends. Like when I went back to Hong Kong, yeah. and I was looking for a way how to move back to Europe. Like for I think for years I was looking for that. So I was not happy. Yeah, and that that is why I was looking uh, for opportunities in Europe. You know, when I was in Hong Kong, if I wanted to find a job in Europe, it's very difficult because of yeah. visa, because of everything. Yeah. Um, and then at the beginning, I was thinking of doing a working holiday uh, mm -hmm. in Germany. So at that time, I think it was like 10 years ago, they just uh, have a Hong Kong has a new partnership with uh, Germany. Right. So it means that uh, we can get like a one year visa and to work and travel uh, okay. for one year in Germany. So I, I wanted to do that at the beginning. Yeah. Until I heard from one of my friends, and she told me that actually, if you study in Germany, even for foreigner, is free of charge. So no tuition fee. That's the clincher right there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then I was like, no way, it couldn't yeah. be. And I did more research on that and found out that it, it is true that I didn't have to pay a tuition fee to study in Germany. And that's why I changed my mind. And I think, okay, let's do a, a study in Germany. And then I hope to find a job in Germany and then stay there. So that was the plan. That's why I didn't really plan to go back to Hong Kong. Yeah. So that, that's also the reason. Was there ever a plan for you to go to Prague or Czech Republic to live there? Because you'd already seen it? Um, no, yeah, actually, at the beginning, I really wanted to go back to Czech Republic, uh, to, to Prague, mm. because I loved the place and I had really good experience there. Um, However, and um, the if I want to stay and live in the in a European country, I need to find somewhere that I I have a best chance to find a job. Yeah. So that means that I need to find a um, country which has a good economy, for example, and a job good job market. And yeah. Germany is a good choice, and that's why I pick Germany. Yeah, and I think that's why a lot of people are picking Germany as well. It's a lot of. Uh... A lot of opportunities here, but the problem is, of course, the language. So, what was your language like when you when you uh, moved, in, moved here? <laughs> oh, that, that was very, very challenging for me. Um, so, before I moved to Germany, I barely speak any German. So, I tried to learn it in Hong Kong uh, by myself. So, yeah. I was uh, looking at uh, so learning from the internet and so on. Um, but it was I didn't have much success, and I couldn't speak anything. So after I moved to Germany, so I had a master degree and, and the study are, were 100% in English. Oh. So, yes. <laughs> so that made it very difficult for me because then I, I didn't really, you know, I didn't really uh, have to learn German. And I tried, of course, my best to learn it, but it's a very difficult language for me. So mm. coming from a like a Chinese language is completely different. So it was very hard and um, it took me some years until I feel comfortable in speaking German. So you feel comfortable now? Yeah, I'm, I, I am kind of comfortable now. So I cannot say that my German is perfect. Yeah, and I yeah. still have a lot of things to improve. But with my German now, I can survive, you say. Yeah, you can get by. And that's the, that's the most important thing is in, yes. in Germany is that you can at least interact and get by on a day-to-day -day basis. Yes, because without German at the beginning, I felt like I was... I, I was like disabled, I think. I, yeah. I think I yeah. was a disabled person and I was so frustrated for everything. Um, yeah. 
And, but I think yeah. Berlin's okay for that. Berlin at least is very, very international and you can get by pretty easily just speaking German, uh, just speaking English there, right? Yes. Uh, if, if I just hang out with my friends and mm. this, I think it's okay, but there are many things you need German. So if you want to do any contract, like uh, renting an apartment or are you going to uh, deal with the government officials with your visa, everything is in German. Even going to the bank and, in you know, all the letters I got was in German. German. So it was, um, it was uh, very frustrating. And um, so I was always very afraid of getting a letters in my mailbox because I would, you know, I couldn't read it. And then sometimes I saw, okay, there's something like, you know, an amount, like maybe 100 euro or something like this. And I was like, oh, do I need to pay this? It it was scary. Yeah, (laughs) it is. It is scary. That's that I've heard from other uh, foreigners as well who moved to Germany that that was one thing that they were afraid of as well is going to the mailbox and getting mail. (laughs) It's like, okay, I I, I don't know what this is. Yes, and I really, I remember I hoped that it was empty. I didn't want to see any letters there. It was scary. <laughs> yeah, and this is just one of them. I mean, I, I, for example, when I was invited to a party or something like this, I was always unsure, okay, I, should I go? Would there be someone speaking English with yeah. me? And, yeah. You know, they, they were so stupid. You know, I, yeah. I was not, I really wanted to make more friends, but then I was so afraid to what if I, you know, nobody was talking with me or nobody was talking in English. And then I looked so stupid there and standing there. And so I, I, I was uh, sometimes very, very unsure what I should do. That is, that is a difficult, that is one of the things about being a foreigner in a, in a country that doesn't speak your language is that it's very, you, you have to be able to put up with social situations like that where you're an outsider because yes. in the early days for me as well, I would be at a at a restaurant for for someone's birthday and they would all be speaking German. And then you would just be on your own little island at the table. Not, no one's speaking to you. You're not speaking to anyone. And that would, yeah. uh, that would just be it. <laughs> you would just be yeah. kind of look at your phone or, uh, yeah. you know. Yeah. That was actually my biggest motivation to learn German as fast as possible. Because, to get in, um, yeah, to, yeah, to feel less stupid in social situations. <laughs> less stupid, yeah, <laughs> yes. And actually, every time after a party, maybe I went home at midnight. And what I did was that I couldn't sleep anymore. And I was studying German uh, okay. like in the middle of the night for hours because really? I was so frustrated. Yeah, I was super frustrated. I was crying and everything. I, I feel, yeah. no, you know, I felt I, I was so stupid, you know, after a party. And so that, that was very painful. But I think actually now when I look back, I think the painful is like the pain is good for you because if you're, it's not painful, then you are not motivated enough. Yeah. So if you, if you, you know, if you don't need to deal with German at all and you are only talking with English with your friends and everything, you don't need it at all. And then you don't feel the pain and then you don't really, you know, you don't really push yourself to learn hard. Yeah, so, that's a that's yeah. a very good point. That's a very good point. That the pain and the frustration is a motivational factor, and yes, I, I think totally. it comes with also putting yourself outside of your uh, comfort zone because it would be easy to just not go to those parties at all or to just not do anything. But if you go there and you have a bad experience yeah. and you come home afterwards and you you said you were crying sometimes, I think that is a very very strong motivator to 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 uh, move you forward. Basically, y- yes, yeah. yes, absolutely. Uh, you said you were. You were you get home from those parties, you'd be frustrated, you'd be crying and everything. You were alone. Did you feel particularly isolated? And w- was there ever any thought of coming back to going back to Hong Kong? From time to time, yes. Mm-hmm. So from time to time, when, especially when I was extremely frustrated. So then I would be crying, and then I was like, "Why? Why? Like, why am I even what? doing this to myself? Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> why am I here? Why don't I just go back to Hong Kong? You know, it's, everything is easy there. I I can figure yeah. everything on my own. I have my friends and family. Everything was great, and so I had this feeling from time to time. And then I always told myself, "No, no, no, don't give up," because I I gave up a lot to move to Germany at the time. I quit my job, like I. I I confronted with my family and every and everybody, you know, told me that oh, this was a stupid decision what I made to come to Germany really? because I, yes, yes. So I I gave up a lot to go back. So I feel like if I go back to Hong Kong, then you know it looks like a failure. Yeah, yeah. yeah because <laughs> and I really didn't want that. And so you want to go back and have them say I told you so. Yes, yes, yeah, exactly, exactly. Because um, when I moved to uh, Germany and, for example, my mom and they were very angry about me quitting my job because I had a good job in Hong Kong. I was just in the middle of the promotion and all these things. What, 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 uh, What were you doing? What was your job? So I was an auditor. 
So mm, I was an account, accountant, yes. Yeah. And so, um, so you're doing pretty was, well. You're pretty successful, and yes, your family's very proud of you. And then suddenly you come suddenly home with I this told crazy them plan. That I, Yes, yes, yes. So then I told them that oh, I, I, I want to quit my job. Like, and then they were like, what? Why? Like, everybody wants to do your job. Like, why do you, why do you want to quit a job and, you know, go somewhere else and th that you don't know what you're doing there and you don't know if you will find a job or anything like that. So, yeah. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, my family was very angry and, but they had to accept it because I, I have decided. And so, um, so I couldn't go back to Hong Kong. I said, no, no, I, I need to show them that this was the right decision. I couldn't yes. go back. And so, and that's why I, I always told myself, no, don't, don't give up. Like, I, no, no, I cannot give up. I need to move on here. So I need to learn German. I need to find a job. I need to do, you know. And we need to make it work. Yes. I need to somehow make it work. Yes. Did you, you, uh, in those difficult times, ever phone home and speak to your mom or, or friends back home and yes. open up to them and say what a horrible time you were having? <laughs> yes maybe not to my mom but uh to my friend so i have uh, i i have a best friend in hong kong and then mm. i i talk with her especially a lot uh in, when i was in berlin when i was super frustrated and yeah. at the beginning of the first years and so i talk with her a lot and uh, yeah and then she comforts me and then she told me yeah try, uh, try your best and don't worry you know so then i feel better after talking with someone that's very uh, important yeah it is it is. What, what is what, what is your relationship, if I may ask, with your mom now? Is is it is it better or? Yes, now it's much better because <laughs> because now I have a job in Germany, so you know I'm earning money. So it's okay. it's not like I'm doing nothing here. So then yeah. now she is proud of me. So now she will, will go to her friend and say, "Oh, my daughter has a good job in in Germany." You know. Yeah. <laughs> so now well, she's all all fine. Is. That's all it is. I mean, you, you, you told me you have kids as well. And I think we can understand that the parents are just looking out for you. And if they, you know, some, I guess if your kid comes and gives you this crazy plan that they've got and they're doing so well where they are, you're just like, what are you doing? Don't do that. Don't do that. So we, I can, un I can understand from their perspective. Yeah. Now, now as a mom myself, I think I can also understand that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, exactly. We, when you, so you were in Berlin and then you moved to Munich, I assume for, for a job. Yes. Uh, actually, before I get to that, before I ask you about that, you were in Berlin for a year. Is that right? Yes. So was did you start feeling more comfortable in that first year in Berlin, so, sort of towards the end of, end of it, where you were already starting to feel more comfortable and, and relaxed and feel that you were making progress? Um, yes. I, I guess at the end of that one year, I felt a little bit better, but not completely. Yeah, because... At the end of the year, I got an internship offer in Munich. And that, that was the reason I moved to Munich from okay. Berlin. And so I was already making some progress because I, I can earn some money from my internship. So before that, I was extremely stressed because I didn't have enough money. Actually, when I moved to Germany, I only had enough money to last for one year living expense. Right. So I was super stressed because I was thinking, what happened if, if I still couldn't find a job after one year because I would be broken the baby I have to live on the street and so I was like really really stressed so by the end of the year and at least I know okay now I found an internship I would have money so um, I was feeling a little bit a little bit better but not 100% because still I needed to find a job like for long yeah. term because of yeah. my visa otherwise yeah. I would still need to go back to Hong Kong afterwards right so when you got that uh, internship for Munich, was that was did you specifically look in Munich? Was that one of your target cities, or was it did it just so happen that it was Munich? It, uh, I applied to anything that I could. <laughs> anything. So it was just I, I, that I didn't out. care. I just wanted to have a job. I, I yeah. need mon money. Yeah. yeah. And so, yeah. but it happened to be in Munich. And then, so you moved from Berlin to Munich. What was your friend situation like in Berlin? Uh, did you did you have at that point a lot of close friends? Yes, I had. Um, yeah, I have some friends there um, in Berlin. Um, but in Berlin, um, it's a, it's quite a special city that uh, many people just move there. So I, most of the people I I knew in Berlin, they are not from Berlin. So yeah. they are from everywhere. So they moved yeah. to Berlin for study and all this. And so actually, by the end of the one year, and many people left as well because. Um, they either found a job somewhere else or mm. they, they went back to their home country and all this. So I, I did have uh, many friends there in Berlin. Um, yeah, but um, after, after the study, basically everybody went somewhere else. Right. Some 
came to uh, Munich as well, like me, and some, uh, yeah, somewhere else. Okay, so you had a you had, you knew some people when you went to Munich. Mm, not, not really. When mm. I first moved here, um, no, I didn't know anyone. So it was later on, and and I have some friends from Berlin who moved yeah. to Munich in the end okay. after me. Oh, I but see. But when I first came here, then I didn't right. know anyone. Right. Was that kind of like starting over again? Was it being a foreigner yes. all over again? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> That's also pretty scary. That move must have been pretty scary for you. Um, yeah, it was scary. Um, but I I was very happy that I, I moved here. I, I was um, because then I have a job and it's very different. Yeah. And then I met many new people uh, in the company and in the right. cities. And so yeah. then I quickly, um, you know, met new people. Yeah. It was, yeah, it was very, it was good. Yeah. Uh, so your your job is fulfilling to you now. The job that you ended up in is that the same yes. place you interned in? Um, yes, actually, yes. Um, so I I stayed there as an intern, and then later on, I got an offer for um, writing a thesis for the company. And afterwards, mm. I yeah, I got a job offer, and that is a, actually that is also a job that uh, you know fit into my profession. So I'm working in finance accounting. So this is perfect for me. And what about what about uh what, what was your level of german when you moved to munich it was must have been a little better than it was at the beginning right? <laughs> yeah it was a little bit better but it was not it, it was not conversational so it was, <laughs> it was not really helping me okay so, because you would have had to do job searching coming coming over to munich then and uh what, what was that process like with your level of german where it was well, it was very difficult because basically I couldn't apply to any jobs that required German um, mm. because I couldn't. So I know some German. Maybe I was like, you know, B1 level. Um, yeah. So that was like, I couldn't really talk. Yeah, I know some words. Yeah, and um, yeah. I, I was not conversational. So mm. I couldn't find a job that required German. So I need to find like an uh, international company or like a job which is only, they only need English from me. And yes. that's not a lot. Of, no. of this kind of company so no. and when there are uh, these positions and normally it's extremely competitive because all the foreigners who couldn't speak German want to apply <laughs> to these jobs and so this was very difficult um, so I sent out I, I don't know I sent out so many job applications I think more than a hundred and um, wow and in yeah, and in the end, I got so many you know refuse letter and, and emails yeah. and rejections oh, no and... Re rejections no replies and then yeah, and so in the end, I think after I applied to more than a hundred position, um, I I got something like maybe free free interview okay. from different in, uh, companies, and then yeah, and in the end, I only got one offer. So um, <laughs> that's all you was, need, though. <laughs> yes, yes, correct. Yeah, yeah, but it was. I, I think I was so lucky to get one because I also know many people. They end up didn't you know find anything, but yeah. it was very, very frustrating for me because. I would think it would have been so much easier when I was in Hong Kong. So with my qualification and all this, and then I, I thought when I was in Hong Kong before move to, moving to Germany, I thought it would be easy to find something because I have a good qualification and, and yeah. experience and all these things. So, so I think, oh, you shouldn't be that difficult because in Hong Kong it would be really easy for me. Yeah. But then when I came to Germany, it was, yes, it was so frustrating because, yeah, it, it's like I, I didn't even get most of the, I didn't get replies for most of the time yeah. for my job application. Yeah. And that is that is very soul destroying as well. I know I didn't yes. send out a hundred. I didn't send out quite <laughs> close to a hundred. I probably had. I probably would imagine it was about thirty job, or no, maybe not even that. Maybe about twenty uh, job applications. And then for me, it wasn't even rejections. I just never heard back from the companies. I'm, <laughs> I'm still waiting. <laughs> Ten years later. Uh, yeah. So that. So, but you still, you still wanted to make it work. You were still determined that you would find something. How long would you have carried on looking if you hadn't gotten that one? Um, I think I would look as long as until, uh, so until my visa expired. Like until <laughs> you know, until I cannot, I cannot stay anymore. For yeah. example. Yeah. But I, I was lucky. I didn't have to. Yeah, I didn't have to extend my visa or and because um, if you study in Germany, you can also extend. Uh, I think like six months of your visa for like a job seeking visa. Yeah. Um. So you can you can stay here and then continue to look for jobs. And I I was thinking that was will be my you know the worst case scenario that mm. I would have to do that. But I was lucky. I, I in the end I didn't need to do that. <laughs> Very cool that it worked out for you. So how did you get your German? 
up to speed then was did you take were you taking courses the whole time or were you just doing self study in your in your apartment yeah so um i tried every method that you could imagine actually so uh, at the beginning when i was in berlin i went to german classes um, because i was in university so there are, uh, there were classes in the university mm -hmm. and i also joined uh, classes outside of the university so the uh, vorhochschule so okay. because it's um, it's an economic option for me and then so i had a lot of classes um, but then i think it was yeah of course it's helping me a little bit but it, um yeah it was not like a, it was not like uh, so fast like what I what I would like to that my yeah. German to improve, and then I did a lot also by myself. I bought like exercise that I, I could do it on myself. I'm learning online like with different you know website or I make uh, like at the time I also use like some uh, paper card. So I I write like one side German word and the other side yeah. I I yeah. wrote English and then I was like testing myself you know like. I was always have these uh, paper cards with me everywhere I go, like in yeah. the U-Bahn, S-Bahn, and I was just always reading that. I was also um, uh, playing like uh, German music or German kids story like on my right. computer. So then when I was <laughs> at, when I was at home, I, I was forcing myself to listen to it. And, you know, like I, I, I tried everything. That's difficult still, for me. That was always difficult. And I admire you for being able to do that. But when I was back in my own space, in my own apartment or wherever I was, I just wanted English. I just wanted my my, my uh, native tongue. to. I didn't want to deal with German. So, But I always knew that I should be watching things in German. On I should be watching German movies. I should be listening to songs in German. I just never did it. I was <laughs> very lazy. Yeah, so I, I, that's why I admire you for doing that. Actually, um, I found it very, very helpful. So now mm. when, so after I have uh, sufficient German, um, like maybe B2 or something like this, so I start to understand what people are talking about. Yeah. So what I did was that I always watch movie uh, in German, um, but then I have also German subtitles there. Okay, and so you can read yeah. it as well. Yes, yeah. And that helps a lot. So my listening improves so much because it of that. It does, because the problem with watching without subtitles is that I find even <laughs> now I miss a lot. So I, I miss a lot of what they're saying because they're talking fast or in, in their accents or whatever. So it does help to turn on the German subtitles as well because it really helps put the words to, the, to, the, uh, to what they're saying. Yes, this is, this is uh, super good, actually, because yeah, yeah. Um, I, I enjoyed the process as well, because I was watching a movie and then, you know, it was enjoyable to watch the movie. And yeah. at the same time, I was learning German. So yeah, so it's like passive that was, learning almost. Yes, it's yeah. super good. So I, I was I was watching movie like almost every evening at okay. that time. And then my, my listening was so much better. But I think the best, actually, the best is to really use the language. So yeah. at the beginning, uh, so my husband is German. So I... But so I that, helps, speak, that helps as well. Yeah, that helps a lot. And so, mm. I, but it, I didn't speak German with him at the beginning. So I mm -hmm. think the first the first few years, we only speak, uh, we only spoke um, English mm. and because I couldn't speak German. And then at, at some point in time, I say, no, I, 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 I need, I need to change this because I, I couldn't speak any German. And, and, you know, at my job, I only speak English and study also. And so I had no opportunities to speak German. So I told him that let's change. Um, let's change from English to German from now right. on. And then starting from there, and then we talk only in German. And that helps a lot. So my, this is better than any kind of um, mm. German classes I have. Yeah. Yeah. It was so much better. It, it was difficult though because it was strange. Yeah, because when you sure. when you met someone, you know someone in English, and then suddenly you had to talk in another language. It's very, it was very strange. It's very, and especially when you're at home, you just want to make things as easy as possible sometimes, and it's very easy to slip back into yes. English or, or to, into what you know. Yes, yes, yeah. But but I I know I I force myself. I say I, I really need to improve my German because I. I, I'm in Germany at that time, maybe for like five years or something like this, and yeah. I couldn't speak, and that is so embarrassing. And so it I, yeah, <laughs> it's embarrassing when people ask how long have you been here, and then yes. you answer, and then you're just thinking, my God, they must be thinking I should be speak, speaking better German by now. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. So yeah, that's why I I, I was really motivated. I need to learn German, and yeah. actually, I think I I knew many people who moved to Germany and they didn't start working immediately or they didn't start their study immediately but then instead they did um intensive german class mm. for i don't know six months or yeah. one year before they start their study or work in german and yeah. i think actually that's the best way um if, if you could afford it and this is really 
the, the better than how I did it because not what I did was that I came to Germany. I had my study in English. Mm. I had my work in English, and and I just couldn't, you know, I I didn't have any opportunities to learn yeah. German because yeah. everything is in English. But I think if you learn German first and then you start something in German, and then the the, the your German will be uh improve much faster. Yeah. And I those people I know who did that and they they are perfect in German like in in mm-hmm. much shorter time than me. Yeah. So I think That's it's the best. I, I've also heard yeah. of people doing that, and they also uh, their their German just came up to a, a a very strong level very quickly. So I I think it is a good way of doing it. Now you you mentioned earlier uh, that you have a kid, right? You've you've got a kid. Yes. yes. So I assume that you met someone. Yeah, I'm I'm married now. So I actually met the love of my life here in Munich. Um, yes. Um, so I I met my husband in 2012 so then we we were married and then we have a kid now and i'm expecting my second one actually oh. yeah when's the due date will be end of february oh, so that is very exciting okay so you you met the love of your life has he traveled back with you to hong kong to meet the family yes sure um um we have been several times back in hong kong um, but since we have a kid now it's more difficult to travel long uh, long distance so yes, normally I now what i do is that i ask my parents to come here yeah, so like, at least easiest. once a year and yeah they are traveling to us and to visit yeah. us and to to see our kid um so now coming from asia to europe there must have been some culture shocks that you experienced in general uh, with that move mm-hmm. can you think of any culture shocks that you had in the beginning, well, that made things I, a little more difficult. I have, I have many. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, I think yeah, it, it's in Germany. I it was so different from Hong Kong. So let's say, for example, um, the supermarket. Um, so oh God, people yeah. <laughs> people do not use plastic bags. So in Hong Kong, it's very common. You always have your plastic bags, and so okay. here, I mean, it's good thing here that they don't use. You have to bring your own bag, yes. and the cashier is not helping you to bag your your no. your stuff. No. Did <laughs> so they you help you in do... Hong Kong? Yes, yes. Yeah, in South Africa yes. too. We always have someone packing our bags. That was very strange. Yes. Yeah. Yes, for me it's very strange. I have to do everything by myself, and then you need to, you know, you need to have a, you need a deposit to use the shopping cart, for example. <laughs> yes. But the the worst for me is the, the opening hours. So for the supermarket, well, at the beginning, I didn't know that uh, the supermarket was not open on Sunday, and so I, so I I was starving on Sunday because I didn't know that okay everything was closed, and then yeah. I couldn't buy my 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 food and. Yes, and so all on Sunday and all the public holiday, the supermarkets are closed. For example, yeah, it is um, very surprising. <laughs> yes, yeah, very surprising because in Hong Kong the shops are open like all the time. So, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, and also like the supermarket close very early here. So especially in Bavaria, so in Munich here, um, they close at eight p.m. Mm-hmm. So for me, it's super early. But now I already get used to it. Now, but yeah, at you, the beginning, <laughs> I do. We we arrived on a Sunday in Germany when we moved here, we, and we had no idea as well that everything would be closed. So we we arrived <laughs> and we had a, an apartment from my wife's company. They they put us up in an apartment. So we arrived, we got to the apartment, and then we realized, oh, we're going to need toilet paper. We're going to need this and that and that. And then we said, okay, let's go to the shop that we saw in the corner. And we went down there and it was closed. And I was like, what? Is, <laughs> what? Because in South Africa, everything's open on Sundays as well for the, for the whole day, basically. So we ended up having to go to a little petrol station and uh, buy some, some, some stuff there for really, really expensive prices. And yeah, that's how we discovered that it's not open on Sunday. But, it, but like you say, we also, I've not only gotten used to it, but I like it that because on Sundays you're almost forced to go out and do other things like go for a walk or do, do stuff like that, or just basically have some family time or whatever. You don't, you don't, you're not tempted to go to the shops because they're not open. So that's, that I find is a good thing. Yeah. Actually now I also think it's good. Uh, I, I'm used to it also because now I, I, I got all my food on Saturday. I did all my mm-hmm. shopping on Saturday. Yeah. Um, I think it's good now that, so people, you know, they, they can rest on Sunday now. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah, my, so... my favorite thing is before a public holiday weekend because there is mass panic and <laughs> chaos at the supermarkets before a public holiday weekend because people know it's not going to be open on Sunday or the, if the Monday is public holiday, it's not that day as well. So people go in and they just buy everything they can. It's like some kind of hurricane or something is coming and they're trying to <laughs> buy supplies for the rest of their, their lives. Yes, yes. So every time you have to be careful, like when you have this uh, public holiday and you have to plan your, your shopping before. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You've also got a blog, 
that you've started here about about life in Germany. So I'm just going to go. It's called um, My Life in Germany, the story of a yes. Hong Kong woman who moved to Germany. And yes. I'm just looking at some of your more recent posts or the ones that are up here. It's like things like decoding your reference letter in Germany, how to yes. find English speaking jobs, water in Germany, dealing with hard water. So tell me more about your blog. What is your what are your aims with it? Where are you getting the ideas for for writing these articles? So as I told you before, it was very difficult for me at the beginning when I moved to Germany because of the language, the culture, and you know, looking for a job and everything like that. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a very frustrating process for me. And after I settled down in Germany, so now I have my, you know, I have my job and I have my family and friends here. So I feel finally comfortable here. Yeah. So I always have this idea. I think since a few years ago already, I always think that oh, you, I, I really want to help other people who are like me. So maybe someone who want to move to Germany or someone who just arrived in Germany who had a lot of dif difficulties. So I was always thinking, how could I reach those people and help them? And um, then I have this idea like, I, um, to, to have a blog and maybe to you know write down all my experience, my advices to the people who, like, who are like me. And um, yeah, I had this idea already for a few years, but then I never really make it. So because I, you know, I always didn't have time or whatever. And um, until this year, actually in uh, beginning of 2019, and I finally uh, think, no, I really want to do that. And I want to really, I really want to start that. And so I look into how I can do it and all this. Yeah. And that's how my blog uh, got uh, started this okay. year. Right. So what I usually do at the end of the interview, Cindy, is ask what advice do you have for other foreigners who are coming to Germany? What What is the most important bit of advice that you could give people that are coming here now? I think that my advice would be to learn German, mm -hmm. <laughs> to learn German as quickly and as much as possible when they come yeah. to Germany, because this will help with everything, basically. Yeah. Uh, help uh, the social life, making friends and dealing with government officials like your visa and so on, yeah. finding our jobs and you know, getting around and reading letters, like everything is about German um, the language. So mm. I think it's very important if you want to live in the country for a longer term. So if you want to find a job here or stay here for a longer yeah. time, this is very important to learn the language. This yeah. will be the very number one advice that I, was, I would give. Okay. And where can people find you on on the internet? I mean, the, I'll put a link to your uh, blog, uh, mylifeingermany.com. And are you also on Facebook, Instagram, and all those places? Yes, yes. I am I am also on all the social media. Um, okay. I'll put links to everything. In yeah, the great. So if one, people want to find you, just go to the show notes, click on it, and uh, get in touch with Cindy. Yes. Oh. Uh, yeah, if, if people have any other uh, any questions, then just, you know, they can ask me. I will try my best to help them. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Cindy, I really appreciate you coming on the show and talking about adjusting to Germany and your journey to uh, getting to where you are now. I wish you all the best for the kid that's coming. And <laughs> thank, yeah, thank you, very, you much. very much. Thank you, too, for having me today. All right, that's it for this week. But before we get out of here, before I let you go, I, uh, I want to say something. If you've listened this far, you're obviously l loving the show, right? So if you do love the show, or let's say you even mildly enjoy it, it entertains you from time to time. I'm not going to ask you to leave reviews on Apple Podcasts, although, you, of course, you could if you wanted to. I'm not going to ask you to support a Patreon. I'm not going to ask anything like that. What I ask is one thing. If you love this show, just tell one other person. That's it. Just tell somebody else. Say, hey, there's this cool podcast it's called The Germany Experience. Take a listen to it. I would really appreciate that. And you would be good to, you'd be doing a good thing. You'd be good, doing a good thing for me, for the show. And you'd be doing a good thing for your friend because maybe they enjoy the podcast. And then they say, hey, you know who recommended it to me? You did. You recommended it. So be the hero and recommend. Just tell one person. That's it. That's all I'm asking. Music in this episode. Theme song by my band, Tencent Janes. Uh, other music in the episode until the end by Ryan Anderson. Thanks for listening. See you next week. Auf Wiederhören. <laughs> <laughs>